It's the fifth game of the season. The October 19th blood battle between Southern powerhouses Tennessee and Alabama. A capacity crowd of almost 65,000 fascinated by the drama on the playing field watches intently as Alabama trailing 10 to 9 lines up for the field goal on the final play of the game. Tennessee's All-America defensive back Jimmy Weatherford shoots through from the left side to block the kick and save the victory for the Volunteers. Coach Doug Dickey later called this the pivotal victory during a season in which the Vols won eight games while losing one and tying one. The 1968 season brought Dickey's five-year record at Tennessee to 37 victories, 13 losses, and three ties. These seniors provided the leadership for the University of Tennessee's 1968 football team. They are Captain Dick Williams and alternate captains Neil McMeans and Richard Pickens. The all-senior backfield included Bill Baker, wingback from Jasper, Tennessee. Richmond Flowers, tailback, Montgomery, Alabama. Richard Pickens, fullback from Knoxville. And Bubba White, quarterback from Atlanta. Other seniors included Terry Dalton, offensive end from Goodlettsville, Tennessee. Jerry Holloway, offensive tackle from Memphis. Charles Rosenfelder, offensive guard from Humboldt, Tennessee. Clifton Stewart, offensive tackle from Chesapeake, Virginia. Nick Showalter, monster man from Kingsport, Tennessee. Captain Dick Williams, defensive tackle from Greenville, Tennessee. Jim McDonald, defensive end from Knoxville. Neil McMeans, defensive end from Gate City, Virginia. Carl Crimser, place kicker from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Jimmy Weatherford, defensive back from Dalton, Georgia. And Rick Marino, middle guard from Memphis. For three years, these seniors have played a championship brand of football for Tennessee. More important, in the twilight of their college careers, all have made academic progress that assures them of degrees in their chosen fields of study. One is majoring in architecture. Others are enrolled in education, business administration, engineering, agriculture, and pre-med. Their courses reflecting the wide range of studies available at UT. And how have they done in the classroom? The combined grade point average of these seniors is higher than that of the rest of the student body. Their performance scholastically and on the football field has proved the compatibility of academics and athletics. As they conclude three years of varsity service, they will recall their senior season as an especially memorable experience. Students, faculty, alumni, and just plain fans truly loved watching this colorful and exciting team play football. They filled Neyland Stadium 62,000 seats six times for a total home attendance of 373,550. Combined with another 250,000 fans at games away from Knoxville, more than 600,000 spectators saw the Big Orange in action during the 1968 season. Up until the day they opened the season against Georgia, the 1968 Vols had the unique experience of sharing newspaper space with the field on which they were going to play. UT officials, after a thorough study, became convinced an artificial playing surface developed by the 3M company was the answer to age-old problems attendant to traditional grass-covered fields. Consequently, huge bulldozers went to work in early summer churning up the hallowed ground of Shields Watkins Field.
a plastic material called tartan, covered by a thick, lush green carpet, was installed at Neyland Stadium, assuring a fast, uniform, all-weather field that had the added benefit of reducing ankle and knee injuries. Thus, the playing field of tomorrow has become an integral part of today at Tennessee. A combination of circumstances gave UT the most extensive press coverage it had ever enjoyed for the opening game with Georgia. First, the contest involved two acknowledged contenders for the Southeastern Conference Championship. Second, the game was played September 14th, a week before most other teams swung into action. The debut of the Tartan Field had an impact, of course, and the fact that the game was on national television created additional interest and developments in the showdown battle with Georgia made the game worthy of the intense anticipation that ushered in the 1968 season. Two dramatic pass catches after time had expired on the clock. The first for a touchdown by Gary Chris, the second for the two-point conversion by Ken DeLong, brought Tennessee a 17-17 tie in an uphill fight with the eventual Southeastern Conference champion, Georgia Bulldogs. Steve Farnsworth, one of a stable of flashy Georgia runners breaks loose from a 46-yard gallop before he's overhauled by Jack Reynolds and Jimmy Weatherford. Middle guard James Woody, playing his first varsity game, spills Georgia quarterback Donnie Hampton for a nine-yard loss to erase the scoring threat. Tennessee gets a scoring chance as the first quarter ends when Captain Dick Williams wins a scramble for a loose ball at the Bulldog 15. Versatile Mike Jones, playing at tailback, fights for three tough yards on the first play of the second quarter. Quarterback Bubba White keeps the ball and moves around Mike Gooch's block to the five-yard line. It's Mike Jones diving over for the score, putting Tennessee into a 7-0 lead just two minutes into the second quarter. Alert defensive play shuts off the Bulldogs' high-powered attack for the rest of the first half. Dick Williams pounces on his second Georgia fumble, blunting the Georgia attack at the Vol 28. The Vols stop Georgia again in the third quarter as Steve Kiner, Jim McDonald, and Neil McMeans dump Mike Cavan for a nine-yard loss. The Bulldogs must settle for a field goal. Jim McCullough's 40-yarder is on target cutting Tennessee's margin to 7-3. to three. Brilliant Georgia safety Jake Scott changes the complexion of the game just minutes later. Herman Weaver's punt goes a booming 57 yards, but Scott fends off would-be tacklers and returns the kick 90 yards. The touchdown sprint puts the Bulldogs in the lead for the first time, 10-7. The undaunted Vols launch a march they hope will bring a go-ahead touchdown. Richard Pickens, the South's leading runner, breaks loose for a 30-yard advance. Ken DeLong carries to the three on this 27-yard pass from White. Georgia recovers a fumble to stop the drive, but the Vols pick up two important points when linebacker Steve Kiner crashes through the Georgia line to spill Donnie Hampton for a safety, narrowing the Bulldogs' margin to 10-9. After Georgia takes a 17-9 lead on Bruce Kemp's 80-yard run, the Vols uncork a stirring drive that makes possible a tie. Here, Mike Jones advances White's pass for 11 yards. Only two minutes remain. Next step in the methodical march is a White pass to Richard Pickens for seven more yards. Fighting the clock, as well as the Bulldogs, White completes a fourth down sideline throw to Lester McLean. The play picks up 14 yards. White is pressured, but he completes his pass to Mike Jones, who goes out of bounds after another 14-yard gain. The imperturbable White again hits Jones, this time for 20 yards to the nine. The drive appears doomed as the Bulldogs' tough defense swarms after White and nails him with a nine-yard loss. Seen here, back to the 13, and then another loss back to the 21. There is no time left on the clock 
when Weich fires a do-or-die pass to Gary Chris. The junior split end makes the catch at the goal line, giving the balls a chance for the tie. Weich takes the snap from Chip Kell, drops back, and fires over the middle to Ken DeLong for two points that produce a 17-17 tie with the Bulldogs. There is Bedlam at Neyland Stadium as 62,000 fans thrill to the game comeback of the Volunteers. Richmond Flowers, who missed out in his bid for an Olympics berth, rejoined the balls for the Memphis State game and added an outside running threat to the orange attack. Clifton Stewart took over a starting offensive tackle job and made an important contribution, not only against Memphis State, but for the rest of the season. A Memphis State receiver, jolted savagely by Jimmy Weatherford, fumbles on the first play of the game. Jack Reynolds' recovery gives Tennessee the ball at the Tiger 10. Mike Jones finds running room behind Terry Dalton and Richard Pickens, carrying to the three-yard line. And it's Jones who hurdles across for the score, putting Tennessee in front six to nothing. The Vols are giving an example of opportunist football at its best. Tackle Steve Carroll blocks a state punt early in the second quarter. Guard Rick Marino picks up the loose ball, bobbles it, then moves to the Tiger eight-yard line before he's overhauled. It's third and goal at the three when White passes to DeLong for a touchdown that puts Tennessee on top by a score of 12 to nothing. A 77-yard drive leads to another touchdown. Here, White keeps for eight yards. Rosenfelder's blocking helps spring Richard Pickens for 12 yards on a draw play. Flowers' great speed gets him around in for eight more yards on this play. Now in Memphis State Territory, the balls chalk up another first down as White goes for good yardage on a keeper. Wingback Bill Baker, used mainly as a blocker, is the target of this white pass, and the senior back makes a diving catch for a 20-yard gain. White pitches back to Flowers, who skirts right in and uses a block by Pickens to break into the end zone and score the ball's third touchdown. Sophomore standout Tim Priest of Huntington makes a fine open field tackle on Preston Riley in the third quarter as the balls concentrate on defense. Memphis State cuts into Tennessee's lead with a touchdown and field goal, but the balls ignite a fourth quarter touchdown drive with a Flowers in sweep for 10 yards. Pickens takes a screen pass from White and charges for 11 more yards. Bill Baker's crunching block frees Flowers, who moves around left end, cuts inside, and scores standing up to give Tennessee a 24-10 lead. For the second time, there is a score after time expires. A pass interference call on this play gives Memphis State an extra play from the one. The Tigers' post-game score narrows Tennessee's victory margin to 24-17. For only the fifth time in the school's history, the Vols play a night game against Rice at Houston. The 52 to nothing victory affords Tennessee reserves a chance to shine. Quarterback Bobby Scott and end Chick McGeehan are two of the stars in this one-sided route of the Southwest Conference Owls. A rice punt covers 54 yards, but it's ideal for a Bill Baker run back. Watch the blocking as Baker weaves his way to the Owl 28 to set up the game's first score. On first down at the 15, Bubba Weich decides to keep and scrambles into the end zone. Carl Crimser's extra point kick 
the first of seven by the German-born senior, makes it seven to nothing, Tennessee. The balls lead 14 to nothing when Richard Pickens gets loose in the second quarter for the longest run of the season from scrimmage, a 52-yard sprint that moves the ball inside the Rice 10. It's Richmond Flowers who takes a pitch from White, cuts behind Tom Calloway's block, and darts in for the score. Herman Weaver's punting has him ranked among the national leaders early in the season. Here the junior from Villa Rica, Georgia, booms one 60 yards to the Owl one. Ahead 24 to nothing, the Vols' Bobby Scott directs an 84-yard drive in the third quarter. The front line of Clifton Stewart, Jerry Holloway, Charlie Rosenfelder, Don Denbo, and Chip Kell push back the Owls as Pickens advances for 12 yards. Scott is on target to split in Gary Chris for a 15-yard advance. Scott reveals ability as a strong runner, too, when he moves around in for 14 yards. The sophomore quarterback throws again, this time to DeLong, who carries to the Rice 18. The passer is Scott. The receiver, Pickens. The play produces a first down at the five. George Sylvie, another talented sophomore, scores from his tailback position on the following play, aided by Tom Calloway's fine block. The Vols continue to roll in the fourth quarter as Scott hits Terry Dalton for 19 yards. A Scott pass to Gary Chris picks up another 19 yards. Speedy Chick McGeehan, who doubles as a sprinter with the Vol track team, spears his second touchdown pass of the game as Scott, in his college debut, completes 12 passes for 170 yards. Bill Young, defensive safety man, is seen making his third interception against the Owls. This one, with his determined 47-yard return, led to a final touchdown as the Vols roll past Rice 52 to nothing. Tennessee's pass defense was put to a severe test by Georgia Tech, which relied almost exclusively on the throwing of quarterback Larry Good. The 24-7 victory reflected the quality work of Jimmy Weatherford, Bill Young, Tim Priest, Mike Jones, Nick Showalter, Jack Reynolds, and Steve Kiner in the Vol secondary. The game was played before more than 60,000 fans in Atlanta. Mike Jones, now playing as a defensive back, makes the adjustment to his new job in grand style as he breaks up a tech pass in the opening minutes. A pass from Good to John Weaver is complete, but Nick Showalter jars the ball loose and Jack Reynolds recovers for Tennessee near midfield. Good, throwing under heavy pressure, hits wide receiver Johnny Sias, who is hit hard by Neil McMeans and Jimmy Weatherford. Tennessee's great linebacker tandem teams up perfectly on this play. The tackle is applied by Jack Reynolds, and Steve Kiner pounces on the football. The Vols continue to come up with timely fumble recoveries as monster man Nick Showalter grabs the loose ball late in the second quarter. There still is no score, but the Vols draw first blood as White carries for 21 yards to the Tech 14. White passes to sophomore end Lester McLean, whose nifty run and determined drive, seen here in slow motion, takes him into the end zone and puts Tennessee ahead seven to nothing. Ahead 10 to nothing at the half, after Carl Crimser's 42-yard field goal, the Vols drive 69 yards for a second touchdown in the third period. Flowers launches the march with this nine-yard gain. Tennessee turns to fullback Richard Pickens, who missed much of the first half with an injury, and Richard responds with this neat run to the Tech 38. 
A diving catch of a white pass by McLean, who came from out of nowhere to make the play, puts Tennessee on top 17 to nothing and helped earn McLean Offensive Player of the Week honors in the South. Tech, which threw a record 63 passes, used the land route to cover most of the distance in its lone touchdown drive. But the score comes on a 10-yard pass from Good to Sias. Flower speed is apparent on this run, covering 34 yards that takes the ball to the ball 49. Richard Pickens makes a vital block. White throws to his wingback, Bill Baker, whose catch and fine run gives Tennessee the ball at the Tech 8. The fourth quarter play covers 42 yards. Pickens, used mainly as a blocker when Tennessee is in scoring territory, registers his first touchdown of the season with a very determined run. Tech continues to fill the air with passes, but fall interceptions such as this one blunt Larry Good's effectiveness. Tennessee picks up its third victory by taming Georgia Tech 24 to 7. Dixie's classic football match, Tennessee against Alabama, took place the following week in Knoxville. Fittingly, in the traditional battle, the outcome came down to the final play in a blocked field goal attempt. Defensive All-America Jimmy Weatherford was the hero in the 10-9 Tennessee victory. As Alabama wins the toss and elects to defend the South goal, the Vols take the opening kickoff with Benny Dalton returning it to the 37. We look at four of the 10 plays in the 63-yard touchdown drive that follows the kickoff. Here, White Keats cuts behind Don Denbo's block and goes for 11 yards before he's hauled down by Mike Hall and Mike Ford. The big play in this drive is this pass from White to Pickens. Richard moves the ball inside the Alabama 10, behind the downfield blocking of Clifton Stewart, Don Denbo, and Chip Kell. Richmond Flowers then gets three important yards over left guard. Two plays later, Flowers scores. Crimser's extra point kick puts Tennessee on top seven to nothing. Alabama comes back for a field goal before the quarter ends. Scott Hunter finds George Braniger with a pass, and the sophomore end accounts for 12 yards before he's hit by Jimmy Weatherford. Here's an example of good teamwork by the defensive backfield. Jimmy Weatherford tips the ball, and Bill Young slams into the intended receiver. It's an incomplete pass. Mike Dean's 28-yard field goal try splits the crossbars, and Tennessee's lead is chopped to 7-3. to three. The Vols defense holds the tide in check through the second quarter. Hunter bobbles the snap, recovers, and throws for his favorite target, Raniger. But Bill Young catches the ball to thwart an Alabama drive. Tennessee continues to sparkle defensively in the third quarter of the grueling battle. James Woody and Frank Yannese join forces to stop tied tailback Ed Morgan. Jim McDonald, senior in from Knoxville who played well game after game, belts Hunter for a three-yard loss. Another big defensive play for the Volunteers as Hunter is dropped by rugged Jack Reynolds for a nine-yard loss in the fourth quarter. Tennessee, trying to salt it away in the final period, uncorks a drive as White moves past his own 25. Lester McLean hauls in a White pass. The play good for 14 yards, putting the balls within field goal range, provided Carl Crimser can hit from record distance. A 54-yard attempt, and Crimser makes it good. The longest field goal in Southeastern Conference history puts Tennessee in front of Alabama 10-3. Ten, Ten minutes remain in the game. But Alabama isn't dead by any means. Hunter's passing ignites the tide. Here he fires to Donnie Sutton for 13 yards. Hunter's pass to Mike Ford carries to the ball's 36. Only three minutes remain, but Hunter has a hot hand. The sharpshooting sophomore quarterback connects with Bobby Swafford to move the ball inside the 10. 
Sutton makes a spectacular fourth down catch in the end zone, cutting the ball lead to one point. Alabama elects to go for the victory rather than a tie. Joe Kelly, inserted at quarterback, rolls out to his right, finds no running room, and throws just short of the end zone. Bill Young's defensive gem saves two points. But it isn't over yet. After recovering an onside kick, Alabama gets to the ball 30 on Hunter's pass to Ford. Only five seconds remain as Alabama gets a last shot at a field goal. The snap is high. The Vols' Jimmy Weatherford charges through to deflect the ball and help preserve a 10-9 victory in a Neyland Stadium cliffhanger with the Crimson Tide. The largest home crowd of the season, more than 64,000, jammed Neyland Stadium for the third chapter in an intriguing series with UCLA. For fans looking for another thrilling finish, such as they had seen in previous games at Memphis and Los Angeles, the 42-18 ball win was lacking in dramatics. But it was a fine display of balance between the passing of White and the running of Pickens, Sylvie, and Flowers. Shut out in the first quarter, the Vols find pay dirt early in the second period. Flower circles in for seven yards. White pass to DeLong, picks up a first down. It takes three Bruins to haul down the all-SEC tight end from Norfolk, Virginia. It's third and one at the three, and Flowers floats through the air to land in the end zone for the Vols' first touchdown. A second Tennessee scoring drive covers 89 yards. Pickens moves ahead for 14 yards after taking a pass from White. Lanky Gary Chris hauls in a pass from White. The play good for 18 yards. George Sylvie, following the blocking of an improving offensive line, moves for the first down to the UCLA 25. Bill Baker comes through with another of his clutch catches, this time hanging onto the ball inside the 15. A penalty moves the ball back outside the 30 on the next play. White passes the ball in the flat to Flowers, who turns on all burners to race to the Bruin 14. White, looking for a receiver, finds Chris at the goal line. Touchdown! Crimson's kick puts the balls ahead 14 to nothing. Meantime, the ball defense is functioning as smoothly as the offense. Jack Reynolds jolts UCLA quarterback Bill Bolden for an eight-yard loss. Two plays later, on fourth down, Bolden gets more of the same. The tackle applied this time by in Jim McDonald. There is more tough luck in the third quarter for Bolden. Here, his long pass is intercepted by Mike Jones at the UCLA 38. Jones returns to the 15, where he fumbles. All-America linebacker Steve Kiner recovers, and the Vols are only 14 yards away from another touchdown. Pickens, aided by a block from Rosenfelder, picks up 10 yards. After Flowers gets the first down to the one, the senior from Montgomery, Alabama, leaps into the end zone for the Vols' third touchdown. Jack Reynolds and Vic Dingus separate Jim Nader from the football with Rick Marino recovering for the Vols at the UCLA 28. Richard Pickens, who led the conference with more than 700 yards rushing, sees one of his rare opportunities to score. There is determination in this run that won't be denied. Pickens reaches the end zone for Tennessee's fourth touchdown, and Coach Dickey now turns to his reserves. Bobby Scott, the quarterback, wants to pass, but he can't find an open man, and the result is a 27-yard gain to the UCLA 21. Scott passes to Terry Dalton, 
who takes it at the four and carries it across for a touchdown. Tennessee leads 35 to nothing. The Vols, who had shut out the explosive Bruins as long as the verdict was in doubt, now are the victims of a flashy kickoff return by Mickey Curitan. He takes Crimson's kick at the one and outraces the entire Tennessee team for a 99-yard touchdown. Tennessee posts a 42-18 victory to run its record to five wins and one tie. The Vols now face four straight tough Southeastern Conference opponents. The November 9th Tennessee-Auburn game had developed into one of the pivotal contests of the SEC championship race. Auburn's success through the air gave the Plainsmen a lead that not even a stout-hearted Tennessee comeback could offset. The Vols suffered their only loss of the season, 28-14 in a night game before 69,000 fans in Birmingham. Mike Currier, who saw little action, made his presence felt as he scored three touchdowns in the first half. Here he takes a pass from Lauren Carter as Auburn streaks to a 21 to nothing lead early in the second period. The Vols start their comeback grind as White completes a pass to George Silvey for 13 yards. A White to Bill Baker aerial, good for 36 yards, sets up the first Tennessee touchdown. The 57-yard drive is capped as White, scrambling under heavy pressure on fourth down, throws to Gary Chris for the score. But the ball still trails, 21 to 7. Shortly before the half ends, Mike Jones pulls in one of the three interceptions the Vols had against the Tigers. Jack Reynolds, in the midst of an impressive junior season, catches Carter from behind for a seven-yard loss in the third quarter. Auburn is forced to pass, and Bill Young picks it off, then returns the ball into Tiger territory. The momentum is now with the Vols, who sense a comeback victory. Weich is hit hard, but his pass to Chris is complete for 13 yards. Weich hits Sylvie with a short pass, and the Nashville sophomore races in for the score. The play covers 31 yards, and Tennessee has cut the gap to 21 to 14. This play almost gave the Vols the tying touchdown but Chris was out of the end zone before the catch. A field goal attempt on the next play failed. Here's the fourth quarter play that dashed the ball's hopes. Carter lofts a beauty to wide receiver Tim Christian, who carries into the end zone. The pass covered 49 yards and put Auburn on top 28 to 14. The courageous balls are still battling at the end. White hits DeLong on the final play for 20 yards part of more than 300 yards gained by Tennessee in the air in this game. Tennessee bows to Auburn 28 to 14, but has three more conference games to restore luster to the 1968 campaign. Coach Dickey was proud of the Vols the following week as they bounced back against Ole Miss. Richard Pickens sewed up selection as the All-Southeastern Conference fullback, carrying the ball 16 times for 122 yards as the Vols chalked up a 31 to nothing victory. The balls indicate they're sky high for this game as Jerry Holloway and Charlie Rosenfelder spring Richard Pickens, who scampers 24 yards on the second play from scrimmage. Pickens again finds a hole and rambles for nine more yards. White goes back to pass, fires to Gary Chris, and the leaping catch is good for a touchdown. Carl Crimser's extra point kick puts Tennessee ahead seven to nothing. Steve Kiner, playing with a broken wrist, picks off an Archie Manning pass and carries it deep into Ole Miss territory. Kiner's great play in this game earned him national honors as Associated Press Lineman of the Week.
On the first play after the interception, Weich again throws toward the goal line. And this time, it's Bill Baker making the catch. Tennessee leads 14 to nothing. Archie Manning, who has been having a fine sophomore year for the Rebels, is harassed by the volunteer defense. On this play, it's James Woody, sophomore middle guard, who deflects the Ole Miss pass. Manning tries again in the second quarter. Jack Reynolds hauls it in for Tennessee and returns the ball into Ole Miss territory. Now the ball offense begins to move again late in the second quarter. White throws to Chris for 12 yards. White this time unloads the bomb to Lester McLean, who catches the 37-yard pass for Tennessee's third touchdown. Neil McMean spills the Ole Miss quarterback for a 10-yard loss as the half ends with Tennessee leading 24 to nothing. Steve Kiner, whose speed was one of the crucial factors in his becoming an All-America linebacker in his junior year, shows good open field footwork as he makes an interception and then returns it 45 yards to the Mississippi 16. Jimmy Weatherford, one of the niftiest defensive backs ever to play at Tennessee, latches on to a fourth quarter Ole Miss pass. The Vols will intercept seven passes in this game for a new single game school record. Big Orange reserves take over. Bobby Scott throws it midfield to Terry Dalton, who then moves ahead to the Ole Miss 30. Lanny Pierce, seeing service at tailback, makes a good run that advances the ball to the Rebel eight-yard line. And now, the final Tennessee touchdown. Scott to Lester McLean. The 31 to nothing victory over Ole Miss was considered the ball's finest overall performance of the season. The tradition steep battle for possession of the scarred old beer barrel, symbolic of triumph in the Tennessee-Kentucky series, brought another crowd of better than 60,000 to Neyland Stadium the following week. Don Denbo's fumble recovery and Jack Reynolds' pass interception were the only important breaks as the Vols ground out a methodical 24-7 victory over the Wildcats. The Vols, dreading the legendary punt returns of Kentucky's great Dickey Lions, put the emphasis on punt coverage. That's center Chip Kell, among the first balls downfield, who hits Lyons following Herman Weaver's 62-yard punt. Another Weaver punt in the second quarter is bobbled, this time by the Kentucky safety, and Don Denbo, sophomore guard from Pulaski, comes up with a recovery for Tennessee. The balls capitalize on the break, moving 50 yards in nine plays, with this pass from White to McLean producing the touchdown. This was the 12th of Weich's 14 touchdown passes as he led the Southeastern Conference in this category. Later in the same period, Tennessee mounts another scoring drive with Richmond Flowers picking up 14 yards on a pass from White. Another White to Flowers aerial, this time over the middle, moves the ball for a first down at the Kentucky 36. White throws a strike to Lester McLean to put the balls in front 14 to 7. This is McLean's sixth scoring catch of the season, only one short of the school record. The key play in a Tennessee drive for a third quarter field goal is this 39 yard gallop by Lanny Pierce, fleet sophomore tailback from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Jack Reynolds makes back-to-back -back plays that are typical of the work turned in all season by the rugged junior linebacker from Cincinnati. Here he throws Kentucky tailback Dick Beard for a four-yard loss. On the next play, Reynolds launches Tennessee on its final touchdown march with a pass interception and a 21-yard return. The Vols retain their hold on the beer barrel with a 24-7 victory over Kentucky. Tennessee knew it would have its hands full against an improved Vanderbilt team in the final regular season game. A capacity crowd of 34,000 at Nashville's Dudley Field watched the balls avert defeat with a superb defensive effort spearheaded by Dick Williams' two interceptions. The 10-7 win enabled the balls to reach the eight-victory plateau for the fourth straight season.
hard-running Richard Pickens heads up the middle for 14 yards on Tennessee's first offensive play. John Miller's pass is deflected at the line by Jack Reynolds. Dick Williams catches the ball for a Tennessee interception. The turnover puts the ball's offensive machinery in motion for the Orange's only touchdown. Pickens fights for six tough yards. And now a nifty bit of running by Flowers, who stays low and squirms through the Vanderbilt defense for 11 yards and a touchdown. The Commodores, trying to get something going, send Chuck Boyd to the outside, where he is stopped for no gain by the stout ball defense. Miller fires a pass to Boyd. It's complete, but Dave Filson is there to turn the catch into a two-yard loss for the Commodores. One of the big plays of the second quarter is this pass from White to DeLong. The sturdy tight end bulls ahead for 26 yards. Tennessee's pass defense preserves a shutout in the first half as Mike Jones comes up with the ball in the end zone for a touchback. The score is tied 7-7 to -7 after a third quarter Vandy score and the balls desperately need to get on the scoreboard again. This determined 32-yard punt return by Jimmy Weatherford combined with a 15-yard penalty against Vanderbilt gives Tennessee excellent field position. Ken DeLong gains 11 yards with this catch of a white pass. The balls always look to fullback Richard Pickens for sure yardage, and Richard responds by picking his way for five grudging yards through the middle. The ball is snapped from the five, placed down on the 12, making it a 22-yard field goal attempt by Carl Crimser. The official signals good, and Tennessee leads Vanderbilt 10 to seven. The balls concentrate on defense in the fourth quarter. Tim Priest interception stymies a Vandy scoring bid. And Tennessee emerges with a hard-earned 10 to seven victory over the Commodores. It's the eighth victory of the season for the Big Orange against one loss and one tie. Coach Doug Dickey's 1968 balls will long be remembered as one of the most colorful teams in the school's history. A team which had been able to turn the momentum of play around with some daring and memorable exploits on the field of battle. It was a season that added another brilliant chapter to the legend of winning football at the University of Tennessee.